contribute. He's in the best shape of his career. So is uh, Jim Tony, another proven right. commodity. But if you're looking to sell some tickets, Damon, Pursuit for 3000 uh, Tommy, how many home runs does he have? Pursuit Over 600 at this point. Third most ever. Yeah. Somewhere. Tommy? And he's in great shape, too. And a very, very nice man. It is Hardcore Sports Fans. I'm Brian Orlando with WFASAL. WFAS AM, Chris D'Angelo with me from the scorecard, 12 to 2 weekends on WFAS AM, and of course, ECW original Tommy Dreamer. I was watching the Yankees last night, and I know it was an exciting game, and they rallied, and it was 13 innings, but the Yankees, to me, I couldn't help but thinking that they're a boring team now. Ooh, ooh, the phone lines are going to get crazy <laughs> now. They, a Met fan ripping up the Yankees. Who you know, punk. <laughs> you just rip up everyone. Anyway, you yes, always he's the king of controversy. The, <laughs> the king he loves exactly. conspiracy theories. I will not ever talk politics with this man. Ever since <laughs> I met him, I've known more now about politics than I ever have in my 43 years on earth. It took more than one bullet to kill JFK. <laughs> That's after the show. I'm watching the Yankees, and yesterday, of course, was Tanaka. And the big story was that Tanaka finally lost the game. He didn't lose a game in 40 starts. No, it was eight starts. I don't care what happened in Japan. But that was the big story, because it seems as if the Yankees really don't have anything else to talk about. The Jeter retirement tour was supposed to be the th big thing, but the Jeter retirement tour has been mediocre, as the player has had a mediocre season. The only thing there is to talk about is Tanaka. The other four days, it seems like the Yankees are a boring team. I mean, I think it's kind of it's kind of the direction baseball is going in a little bit. You know, like baseball is getting a lot of heat being kind of boring these days. And, uh, I mean, you're right about the Yankees. You know, Jeter, the way, the way you get, if you're a Yankee fan, the way you get back into Derek Jeter is go watch any Yes Network, like, not documentary, but watch the, uh, the Yankeeography on Derek Jeter, and you'll be like, okay, I'm going to watch Derek Jeter play for the rest of the season. Because if you go back and watch that 3,000th hit when Michael Kay is like, oh, wouldn't it be amazing if he hits a home run on his 3,000th sure. hit? Hits a home run on the next pitch off of David Price and hits, like, 320 that season, leads the league in hits. There's hope for Derek Jeter this year. And that's, that's what you got to keep an eye on with the Yankees. Yeah, uh, the Yankees do, too, have a lot of holes. It's amazing how I feel the AL East is the weaker division now. Right now? Yeah. And, uh, you know, the Yankees with a, a high payroll like they always do, but they, they are lacking a lot. of They're lacking pitching. And, you know, injuries happen and all that stuff. But when they went out there, beside, you know, I was happy they got Tanaka because, you know, I was – Hoping that he'd be what the player that we're seeing and not like, you know, other Japanese import pitchers that right. we've received that haven't been the best for the Yankees. But, uh, yeah, there's a lot of holes. And what we're talking about with the Mets is what the Yankees don't have is their farm team because the Yankees always go out and trade their entire sure. farm team for now, now, now. But that was under the Steinberg. Well, I mean, Chris, you talked about how baseball is boring now. The Yankees have a couple of guys in the farm system, Mark Montgomery, Adam Warren came from the farm system, but they were later round picks. Uh, they don't have anyone. The last guy I remember was Banuelos, Manny Banuelos. He's, st he's still in my, he's in AAA. They're like making him throw like three innings per start because he came off the Tommy John surgery, so they're really babying him. He's dominating, though. And then you have this, you remember the Killer Bees a couple of years back, a couple of years ago, they kept mentioning them, the Andrew Brackman, Banuelos, and Dylan Batan. Yes. Dylan Matantis is up right now. He pitched against the Mets a couple of weeks ago, struck out six batters in a row. He's legit. Like, he's, he could be, like, the next closer for them. If Robertson falters, they're going to slot him into the closer role because his, his biggest problem is always he had no control. Now he's under control. He's throwing a fastball slider. He, the guy's unhittable. Like, yes, no one's beast. hitting him so far. So at least you have someone to look forward to. You talked about baseball being boring. You have your stars. You have... Mike Trout, you have Bryce Harper, you have your stars. It always seemed like there were some stars on the Yankees. That doesn't seem to be the case anymore. I'm watching an old team. Teixeira, nowhere near the star that he used to be. If he ever was one, it was just a big name that came to the Yankees, so he automatically became a star. But with all his early season struggles throughout the years and the fact that he's on a lackluster team, it just seems to me like the Yankees are missing something that was there just a couple years ago. Again, I have a huge issue with saying that they're a lackluster team when they're a half a game outside of first place. You can have an issue with me being a Mets fan. I always have an issue with you. <laughs> I'm a Mets fan, too. Continue. There are Yankees fans that are talking about this. There are Yankees fans that are complaining about this. 
I don't get this. I don't pull this information out of thin air. You talk to Yankees fans today, they're already disappointed in the season. They're hovering around first place. They're in first place. Yeah, they're tied in first place right now, Toronto. That's my point. The point is, Yankees fans always want more, and I guess me, even as a Mets fan, you just expect more from the Yankees. At this stage of the game, I do expect more than being tied for first place for Toronto. I expect the Yankees to have stars dripping from the sky, falling onto the field, and wowing me every game. Well, that's not going to happen. I knew that wasn't going to happen when they signed Carlos Beltran. I'm a big fan, but he can't play the outfield all the time. You know, now if, if he needs elbow surgery, we'll have to say goodbye to that for the next, what, he signed two years? Three, yeah. three years, 36 million. Yeah. How old is he, 40-something? Uh, it wasn't at 38, 39. Yeah. yeah. Um, Brian McCann, I think he's great. I think he'll be a nice, uh, he could be our predecessor to uh, Posada, even though I was a big Russell Martin fan and wish they never got rid of him. I like Tex, but Tex is getting older. They need a second baseman. They need a shortstop. They need a third baseman. And, uh, you know, they need, what, a, they need pitching. What do you think of uh, young Javis uh, Solarte? I like him. I, I think like he could too. be uh, the future of the team, but he could also be the star. Him. That's that's what's missing. He could be the guy. Mm, time will tell. You know, uh, coming from the world of professional wrestling, everyone will say, "Oh, I used to watch it during Hulk Hogan, or I used to watch it during The Rock or Stone Cold." These are people that we would see perform every single night on great teams of the WWE. Now. We really are lacking a face of baseball. Like you said, Mike Trout, Mac Trout's doing okay. Right. There's uh, McCutcheon. He was doing great when the Pirates are surging, but now the Pirates are doing nothing. You need to be the face of baseball. You need to be on a winning team and perform every single time. I think right now it's very telling what's going on in Northeast baseball because I think the biggest name – in the Northeast in sports right now is Matt Harvey, and he's on the disabled list. Yeah, it, it's true. The, to go back to the stars not doing well, baseball's hard. Like, hit, to hit is hard, and the pitching is getting better and better. And like you said before, you know, the guys that were on the steroids before, like McGuire hitting 70 home runs, Fong hitting 70 home runs, those guys don't exist anymore. And the pitching is just getting more and more progressively dominant. You got guys like Kershaw who are going out there. They don't give up. They give up two hits, and that's considered a lot sometimes for, right. for a guy like that. You got Strasburg striking out twelve a game, and then you got to have guys who are pitching third and fourth in the rotation. They're dominating. You have a guy like Mike Trout. He's hitting, I think he's hitting like two eighty five, which is low for him. He's at three thirty the past two years. Well, look at the Mets' number five pitcher and Dylan G. He's probably the best on the team. Yep. By default, he had to start opening day. Jonathan Neese, I think yep. yeah, it could be a turnaround with him. I mean, we all want the heyday of the good and darling uh, Fernandez. We, we want all that, but uh, it's not going to happen with, one, baseball expansion, two, everyone blowing out their elbows and, you know, facing Tommy John surgery. You look about with Strasburg, the, the year the Nationals had, and they took him out of the playoffs and they went out. Then the next year, boom, he blows out his elbow. Again, these are the risks, what we're talking about earlier. The future, or right now. To me, in sports, uh, and again, it's what you do right now, and you don't really have to sacrifice so much of the future. Uh, if you look at most players going into free agency, when they're eligible for that free agency, they're actually there on their decline age-wise, you know, and or giving these guys huge, huge contracts. Uh, how much did uh, Trout get? hundred million, something like that? A lot. He got all that money. Yes, he's very, very young, but or, or Cano. How much does Cano actually have to go out and perform? Because if you're an athlete, if it's not about money, it's about winning. And if you're not winning, hey, I'm still making $200 million a year. Well, the I made a career out of losing, <laughs> and uh, it was about the money as well. And, you know, but there was a competitiveness, but I'm in a predetermined sport. Uh, How many matches did you lose to Raven straight? Ooh, three years in a row, but I made the same amount of money. You know, it's uh, for us, it's about the show. For them, it's not really about the show. And uh, you, even if they get cut, I remember I was friends with a player, and uh, I went to, I sat in his box to the Giants, and he got cut the next day. And I was like, hey man, thanks for the tickets. Sorry about you know getting cut. 
And he wrote back, they still have to pay me 13 mil, and I could sign for any team that I want. And I was like, oh, I don't feel bad for you, you know? But uh, that's the economics of baseball. I mean, again, to get cut and get paid $13 million and then to go play with somebody else, that's awesome. I wish that was in wrestling. The 10-year contracts, the long-term contracts, are really just a loophole in not having to pay somebody all that money at once. I mean, I don't think the Angels had any intention of playing Albert Pujols for 10 years. They know damn well he's only going to have a couple of years left. But they stretched it out over time so that when he is done, they'll still be paying him. But they got the most out of him now. What did Pujols get? I think he got 10 years, $275 million, something like that. Right, so $20 million a year. They know that they might only get five of those years. And of those five, maybe three of them are going to be Albert Pujols quality years. They know that they spent $200 million for three years. They just can't give him that, so they stretch it out over 10. That becomes the trend in baseball today. So that's why you have guys getting paid ridiculous amounts of money long past the point where they could produce. I was actually surprised with the whole, if this was in New York, Pujols hitting his 500th. It was kind of like, hey, he hit a 500th home run, and then what else is happening? It was the big, big news or the big, right. big chase, maybe because it happened at the beginning of the year. But that kind of went like hush hush that it happened. It was just like a hiccup and hey, by the way, what else is going on? I think with Albert, they expected so much more and they still expect so much more for him. And with the season he had last year, people are tentative to get behind him because 500 for pool holes. And I'm not saying it's fair, but I believe the perception is people want him to be at 800 right now. Right. Uh, I mean, again, the Angels, another team that if you look at them on paper, they got Hamilton, who's unfortunately injured Pujols. They re-signed, uh, no, they signed Ibanez, another 40-plus year old guy who's not really doing well, but based upon his last year's performance, they could be hitting a lot of home runs and, you know, pitching. They have Weaver and C.J. Wilson. They went out and spent a lot of money for their peasant, uh, sorry, for their present and their future, and it hasn't paid off. No, not at all. We are Hardcore sports fans, I'm Brian Orlando from WFAS AM 1230. You can hear me live 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. weekdays, WFASAM.com. To my left, Chris D'Angelo from the Scorecard, all things sports, Sundays, noon to 2 p.m. on WFASAM.com. And across from me, of course, ECW original, Tommy Dreamer. You call me the controversy guy? Yeah. So then we'll talk controversy because the Clippers eliminated but yet they're still front page in the headlines